Hey guys, in this video, I'll go through five basic cuts on the watchmaker's lathe using hand gravers in two different positions. Before I start, I want to talk about graver handles. The primary purpose for a graver handle is to protect the user in case of an accident so the graver tang won't end up inside of your hand or wrist. So you may opt to choose a wooden handle or some people like to use a bit of rotico at the end of the graver or even a wine bottle cork. I prefer to cut the tangs off the ends and put them in these cheap pin vices. I can easily remove and insert the graver at any time. It also makes it handy so you don't have the handle weight on the graver sharpening tool when you're resharpening your gravers. In the beginning, we're going to be turning brass rod with a diameter somewhere between three to five millimeters. This will depend on the collets that you have at hand. We're gonna cut the rods into lengths of around 12 millimeters or half an inch. And then we should fold the ends flat and deburr the edges. If you don't have a vise, then you should still deburr the edges and then try learning to take facing cuts first, which I'll be demonstrating later in this video. So now we're going to fold the ends flat. And once you're happy with the end, we just quickly deburr it. Slowly rotate the workpiece in your hand and just lightly with the file, go over it at 45 degrees. So here we have it. This just makes it a lot easier to insert into the collet and ensure that you're going to use the correctly sized collet also. So we're gonna insert our appropriately sized collet into the lathe, followed by the workpiece. Now, because we're turning down the material to length of three millimeters, we want a maximum overhang about five to six millimeters of the material. So now we tighten the collet. So for this first exercise, I'm going to be turning with the graver in a position called diamond down. We want the T-rest to be at a height. So when I rest the graver on it, the top of the tip will be at exactly the center of the workpiece. So now I'm checking that the uh, graver, when it rests on the TRS, that it's gonna be approximately on the center of the work. Look, at the end of the day, it's not a center lathe, okay? The tool isn't fixed. You don't have to get a bang on the center, but you want it close enough. And also make sure that the T-rest is actually as close as possible to the workpiece. As we turn the diameter down, you constantly have to keep moving the T-rest forward to ensure that the graver is supported and you won't get any chatter or a poor finish on your workpiece. So this is what we're going to cut. Have it the wrong way. Okay, so this is going to be our half inch or 12.5 millimeter um, piece of brass. Um, we're going to reduce this end to one millimeter. I ran out of room there, sorry, for a length of three millimeters. So we're going to turn a perfectly square shoulder. Uh, and really what we're aiming for is we're aiming for this to be perfectly square. So what we don't want is we don't want sort of this arrangement where it's undercut. And we definitely don't want a radius on our corners, we want them nice, square, and sharp. And then we're going to turn the workpiece over and we're gonna cut a taper. So we'll mark this off at two millimeters and then um, make a taper here. Sorry, before we do that, our material will be like this and we're going to take a uh, facing cut of the material. Um, for our next piece, what we're going to do 
is again we're going to take a facing cut and then we're going to make this small female center so when we have a drill it will be dead on center and we can drill a nice hole later on but we're not going to be drilling today we're, today we're just going to be doing the five cuts and uh, so let's just get straight into it so now we're about to take our first cuts when turning a square shoulder and scribe the three millimeter line So now we can see where the length of our three millimeter one diameter pivot will be turned to. So the first cuts I'll be taking are gonna be in the diamond down position. And later on, I'm gonna be turning in diamond up, which is in this position. It should be noted that when turning in diamond up position, the T-rest should be raised. So then when the graver rests against the T-rest, the top surface is at the center line of the workpiece. Ideally, brass will be turned at around 1000 to 1500 RPM. But in the beginning, just to get used to it, it's more than okay to turn the brass at a slower speed. And because you're turning by hand with the hand graver, it's very touch and feel. You know when to uh, speed up or move the graver along faster or slower. So don't worry about all the engineering lathe tables of speeds and feeds, because they're all out the window when turning by hand. If you're getting a bit of wobble in your uh, cutter, it's best to move the T-rest a little closer and then test it again. So as you're going along, you want to ensure that you're turning the work um, parallel and there is no taper. If your T-rest is a bit tapered, then you might find that as you follow your graver along, you'll get a tapered result in your workpiece. So now I'm going to demonstrate turning in a diamond up position. The most important thing about turning the lathe is just getting the lathe out and doing it. Experiment with the angle that you hold the graver, experiment with the height of the T-Res, and then you'll find something that works for you. You know, not everyone is going to turn exactly the same, and I think you'll be hard pressed if you get 10 people in a room all turning by hand that they'll turn exactly the same. So you find the method that works for you and you stick with that. And at the end of the day, as long as what you're turning is to the correct measurements with as little tolerance as possible and the finish is good, it doesn't matter how you got there. So now I'm going to go back to turning diamond down. And as you get more comfortable, you can take cuts turning in both directions. If you're getting big long swarfs on your cut, it's an indication that you're doing something right. If you start to feel and hear a little bit of chatter, it's a good sign that you need to move your T-rest a little bit closer to the work. Um, the workpiece is at 1.1 millimeters. Now we want to screw up this shoulder and then come back and take a couple final passes. Now we'll just clean up this corner in here. So now that I've cleaned up and squared that shoulder, I've moved the T-rest into position to take the final pass and that 0.1mm off the diameter of our pivot. And there we have it really. That's the um, pivot finished. Okay, so now we're going to remove the workpiece. It's probably easier to find a small bit of brass rod and push the material out from behind the collet. And we're going to insert the other side in. So we'll just take a facing cut on here. So we're going to take a quick facing cut here. Just with the facing, it's probably best to turn a little slower. Okay. 
Okay. So now I've marked off two millimeters and now we're gonna turn this at 45 degrees. So we go until we find an angle where the center point is going to be in a straight line with the scribed line and we'll start our finishing cuts once we get closer to that point. Getting very close to the correct angle. So it's a pretty sharp point there. If you want, you can experiment with different angles as well. You just want to keep practicing all these different cuts because when we start making tools and parts and things like that, um, you want to have these techniques down pat. The fourth technique that I'm going to demonstrate is called catching the center. This technique is used um, before you drill any work to ensure that the drill will drill the workpiece straight and won't wander. Out of the five techniques that I'm demonstrating, this one is probably the most difficult and it's very easy to get a male center inside the female center. So as you can see, there is our female center turned into the end of the workpiece. Okay, so we're gonna start parting off now. So we're about to start parting off, I'm gonna use the 20 degree um, tool. If you have a parting tool, by all means, use that. This is really for those who don't have a dedicated hand parting tool and um, just to show the versatility of these gravers. But um, if you're used to the 45, I definitely use the 20 to 30 degree because the 45 degree, you'll just have to take deeper cuts because we're going to cut a V groove to part off the work. Um, also, as you're getting close to the center, be very careful not to damage the tip. So we're gonna part off the work here and just flip the just about really flipping the graver over. At the moment I'm just feeding it in straight but soon we'll have to take sliding cuts along the V groove. So this is really good practice in finding the center of the work. Just speed up the lathe a little. Try different um, grips also. You might find that the two index fingers are really good for um, turning but for parting you might want a bit of a more sturdy grip. Now we start cutting along the taper and just be really gentle because if you if you made your graver to have a 20 degree tip it's going to chip very easily. Look as you're turning you're going to chip your graver tip there's no doubt about it. If you don't, I don't think you're pushing hard enough and you really need to know the boundaries of your tools. In the beginning, you might find yourself just constantly resharpening your tools and it can be a bit demoralizing and a bit of a demotivator, but it's good practice. You know, you practice sharpening, you practice turning, you know, eventually you'll get it. As long as you're trying different things, you'll get there. You know, everyone can do it.
So here's our parted work piece. And then what you do is you'd reverse it, put in a collet, face the work off. Um, yeah, so that's basically it. I've demonstrated how to take five basic cuts in the watchmaker's lathe. Look, if you want to get some great use out of these lathes, I suggest you practice turning these multiple times out of brass, practice in some steel, either a drill rod or a silver steel. In the next video, um, I'm going to demonstrate how to make a countersink tool and I'm going to be demonstrating two new techniques, which is filing in the lathe, hardening and tempering. Stay motivated, keep doing what you're doing, you're going to get there. It's just all about practice, you know. You can read all the books in the world about turning or you can um, watch this video or other videos a million times. But at the end of the day, the only way that you're going to learn is by practicing. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more videos like this, hit that subscribe button. And if you have any questions or there's something that you want to say, feel free to leave it in the comment section below.